right, we're back for our first and second intermission uh, break and got a uh, special guest, Dave Feemster, with us. So Dave is uh, lives here in Pueblo, son is on the team, ex-Chicago Blackhawk, uh, Colorado College, All-American, and, uh, and just all around great guy, businessman and uh, uh, just a very generous uh, person here within the Pueblo community. And also subs in at uh, time to time for uh, our color commentary when uh, Scott can't get here. So welcome, Dave. Thank you, Marty. Appreciate yeah. being here tonight. It's going to be yeah. fun. I mean, we love the game. And Dougie playing here, your son, with my son yeah. Sam, It's it's been a special year. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, the pandemic has done some funny things to... Uh, to the sport and, uh, and especially in Canada as we can you know we see a guy like uh, Brian Lochner number 21 for uh, NOCO who played up in the uh, uh, Western Hockey League uh, junior A tier one up in Canada you know top amateur hockey league in uh, North America absolutely where most of the guys get drafted from so you know we've had this trickle down effect and I think we both uh, noticed at the beginning of the year how good the hockey was and that's because of things of this nature you know Marty I didn't know how good this league was I really didn't yeah. I thought well it's you know tier three but I'll tell you what the games have been exciting the top 10 players in each team I think could play at the next level North yep. American League possibly North uh, maybe USHL and the Lochter got a pretty goal last night. I didn't know yeah. he was a Western League player. Yeah, so you know he's uh, from Windsor, Colorado, and and I remember when he was younger and Doug was playing against him, and we would play against uh, um, the Northern Colorado Eagles team of the, their youth program, and then he played for the Thunderbirds, and then he went up to Canada to play. So Dave, you know, we're talking about how good the hockey is. You know, from your perspective, what what do you think is 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 making these kids you know, play the way they are these days. You know, it's, it's a much different game to, from the times that we played. You know, at young ages, Marty, they're doing power skating, which I had never heard of power skating until I got to Colorado College. I didn't know there was two edges on a blade. And when I came to Colorado College, we started doing some power skating, but these guys are doing it at young ages. So their stride, the speed of the game, their edge work, deception, their edges uh, are impressive. And the skill level is a lot better than when I was a kid. Maybe you can say yeah. that as well. The skill level... These guys are handling the puck, making plays that really the NHL players were making when we were yeah. kids. It's it's the hands. It's and, and like you said, it's the edges, the power that these guys skate with, and it's also the size as well. I mean, the, the skills that these guys have with the size that they have because that just wasn't existent back in the day. Yeah, you know the size and the uh, the caliber of player that in the summer they're working out all summer. Yeah. They're not taking the summers off playing golf and you know having fun like we did. These guys are working in the gym, drinking protein drinks three days a week. They're in the weight room, working hard in their game in the off season. So when the season starts, they maybe put on 10, 15 pounds from the summer, just working out, skating, doing power skating in the summers as well. So I think it's uh, it's almost a 12 month sport nowadays, and they're, they're really working hard in the off season. So Dave, talk to us about uh, your background in the game. You know, I, I think you've got one of the greatest stories of how you got to Colorado College. So if you don't mind sharing that, I think that is it's one of the funniest stories, and it's just absolutely classic. You know, on a, on, a, on your you know pathway to uh, to to the pro game, really. You know, Marty, it had to be God involved in it because you, it couldn't have written a script. I, I was trying out for the Winter Spitfires in the training camp, which was in the OHL at that time. And uh, we had a game up in, in uh, a little town called Oak, Oakville, Ontario, right outside of Toronto. And the coach said, you don't have to sign to play in this game just to get a feel for the game. You know, so I said, I was 16 years old. I was scared to death. Because, you know, some of these guys are 19, 20. Yeah. And I was... Uh, I and was you were a, an American going to Canada. Yeah, exactly. Which, I was, was, which was a big thing back then. Oh, Marty, I was the only kid on the bus from the States. And wow. guys would ask me where I was from. I'd say, just down the road. <laughs> And I was from Detroit, so it was just down the road, but over the river, you know. Across the border. Across the border, yeah. I didn't want to say anything about that. So we had this game up in Oakville, and the first five minutes of the game, the Ben Champion brawl, and I get in a fight with a guy, and I'm, I stepped on a stick, and I twisted my ankle. So the rest of the game, I was in the locker room with my my ankle just throbbing, you know, when you roll oh, your, le- your, your ankle. So on the way back, I was sitting next to a kid named Ted Bonham. Ted was an old guy. He was 19. And uh, he's sitting next to me, and he's got a beer in his hand. He says, what are you doing here, kid? I said, well, aren't we all here playing the NHL? He goes, oh, are you kidding me? He said, this is an expansion team, this first year in the OHL. He says, we're going to be in last place. This is going to be a terrible team. He goes, if I had to do it again, I'd go to college. I said, really? He said, yeah, oh, yeah, I'd go to college. So 
On the way home, we got home about 3 in the morning. I got my gear, and I said, hey, coach, I think I'm going to try to go play college hockey. Well, about three weeks later, I didn't know this, but there was a, a scout coming through from Colorado College in Windsor, and he went to the Windsor Arena where I was trying out for the Windsor Spitfires, and he had a different uh, view on scouting. He would go to the janitors of the rinks that he was scouting at and ask who were the hockey players in that area. So he said, who saw more hockey than the janitor? He saw all the players. Uh, crazy. Janitor being the best scout in the rink, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he comes to this uh, janitor. He said, hey, who's the best uh, defenseman? I need a defenseman. Who do you got? And he said, hey, there's a kid from over in Detroit. You wrote down my name. I can end up meeting the gentleman. He watched one game, and then he offered me a scholarship to go to Colorado College. So through the janitor's word, I got an opportunity to play college hockey. You, you know, and it just proves you never know who's watching, right? Come on, bro. That's, a, know, that's the message. You know, you you got to go out there. you got to be ready to, to work your hardest every single time you go on the ice. Yep. doesn't mean if it's practice or a game. You've got to go out and give it all. And that's what's going to differentiate you as a as a player that people notice than uh, the other guy. Absolutely. And Marty, I had no idea this janitor was even in the building. Did you did you give him uh, part of your uh, signing bonus when you turned pro? You know what I did I did do though, Marty. I went back to Windsor Arena when I when I got the scholarship opportunity, and I said, "Where's the janitor?" And the guy said, "Why is something dirty? Did you drive me?" Up? I said, "No, I just want to talk to janitor for a minute." He said, "What for?" I said, "I just it's a personal thing." So the janitor came over. And I said, "Hey, I just want to say thanks a lot for giving me the opportunity." He goes, "Who are you?" And I said, "Dave Feemster." He goes, "Oh my gosh." He goes, "Well, I just told him the truth. You're a yeah. hardworking guy, and you, you you played well. Quality guy, hardworking. You know." Those are uh, some great qualities that I think nowadays a lot of guys look for. So uh, talk to us, uh, 1980, 79, 80. I Tell us to, your experience on that. You know, and, uh, where, where, where did you end up? Okay, I got, I got invited to the uh, tryout for the 80 Olympic team, and there was uh, four teams. They had a round-robin tournament at the Colorado, uh, in Colorado Springs, the Broadmoor World Arena, the old one that you and I played in. So if, if you people that are watching and listening here, 1980 so we didn't really say what it was but 1980 what's the significance of 1980 so we'll let Dave finish the story and the miracle on ice uh, there you go. was trying out for the hockey the uh, gold medal hockey team but at the time uh, there was 80 te- 80 players four teams we had a round robin tournament in the last game Marty I was playing for the Great Lakes team we were playing against Minnesota which 12 of those guys played for Herb Brooks the year before at the University of Minnesota so it was kind of a stacked team. It was all set up as his team was supposed to win this tournament. And these bunch of no-name kids from Michigan came in, and we beat them 4-2 to two in the final game to win the round-robin tournament. Wow. So we were pretty proud of ourselves to beat that stacked squad that yeah. Herb Brooks had put together. Yeah. And then uh, after the game, he said, hey, we're going to name 28 players, and uh, there's 80 guys in the stands. And the rest of you guys, thanks for coming. So which, named, is, which is in the movie. The guys yes. sitting and they're calling out the names. Right. And we're all sitting on the edge of our seat. And uh, he, he called off 28 names. My name was not on that list, so I didn't make the team, which was a disappointment. Yeah. But he must have had the right guys. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say that. But, you know, but what a great experience, you know, from, uh, from trying out for a team in the OHL, the janitor giving your name, and then here you are, you know, that close to playing in the 1980 Olympics, which was, you know, one of the most exciting times. You know, being a Canadian and, and watching that game, or watch, I shouldn't say not just that game, but the, the whole Olympics and, and watching what these young guys did. You know, a bunch of college guys, especially playing against a lot of the European teams, which were all, you know, older, you yes. know, 20 years old, or right. 20 years old and up, right. where, you know, you're looking at uh, a bunch of guys that are like 21, 22 and younger. Yes. And, they, you know, they put on the uh, performance of a lifetime in that Olympics. Especially and beating the exciting. Russians, which yeah. they had beaten the NHL team 12-2 to at Madison Square Garden yeah. in February. So to come out and beat that, that Soviet team, it was like men against boys, really. Yeah. And one, came out, one game out of 100 might we win that game, and that was the game they won. So, you know, you, you talk about trying for, out for the OHL, which is the Canadian Major Junior, which is where Brian Lochner has been playing, and they're shut down still. Um, you know, uh, but getting the opportunity to go to college. You know, I know the story. You know my story. Both had the same thing. And, and uh, the importance of the opportunity to get to college, and, and that's what a lot of these young men are trying to do. It doesn't matter if they're playing Division One, Division Three. You know, if they're going to get to the experience to go to college and play some hockey, and the hockey is phenomenal at, that, is. at those levels, you know, that these guys are looking at. Even if it's Division Three and, and uh, ACHA Division One, 
and still spectacular hockey. So, you know, Ernie, you earned your degree, I earned my degree. You know, we thought, hey, we're going to, you know, have these long, great pro hockey careers. Both of us had back injuries. Yeah. So, you know, something to fall back on. And I'll, I'll tell you my story of uh, playing in the minors with the, with the Islanders. You know, I had a bunch of guys that played major junior and then a bunch of other guys that played college. And, you know, guys would come up and say, hey, Marty, you know, the guys from major junior, you played college, right? Yep. Did you earn your degree? Yep. Man, I played major junior and here I am toiling around in the minors and probably not going to go up and stuff. Yeah. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, guys that went to other colleges came up would come up, hey, Marty, you didn't get your degree at Colorado College? Yeah. Four years? Yeah. Didn't get my degree. You know, and, and uh, the experience of just guys like that coming to me and saying, hey, you know, you got your degree and you got something to look forward to. You've got... You know, you can utilize that for your future, even though your career didn't go and stuff. So, you know, in people listening out here and these young men, you know, the importance of, of uh, the college path to playing hockey. Again, not not necessarily making that path to the pro game, but or it maybe it does, and you go play Europe or you play somewhere in the minors and stuff. But that opportunity to be able to. Uh, um, earn that degree and, and be set for your future. So, Mario, a really funny story. We're in Vancouver, and uh, me and a guy, Glenn Cochran, who played for I Philadelphia, played yeah, for Victoria. Yeah, yeah, played for Victoria, my old town. And we go into this restaurant bar called Richards on Richards in oh, Vancouver. Yeah. yeah, I know where that is. Dicks on Dicks, they call <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. And Gretzky was in there. It was a game after L.A. was playing against Vancouver after the game. We didn't know he was going to be there, but... So Glenn goes, hey, let's go over and talk to the great one. Yeah. And I said, oh, he's got a bunch of people around him. No, he said, no, no, we're going to go over there. So we go over there, and Glenn fights through the crowd, and he gets to Gretzky at the at where he was sitting, and he looks up and he says, hey, Glenn, how you doing? He says, hey, pretty good. He goes, good to see you, great one. And uh, Gretzky, he, and Glenn says, hey, this is, uh, he goes, Femer, how you doing? He goes, how's the pizza business going? Yeah. Gretzky knew I was in the pizza business. He says, you know, we're all scared of when we get out of this game, what yeah. we're going to do. I said, Gretz, I think you've covered pretty well. But yeah. most guys, like you said, they really admired the guys that got their degree because they knew yeah. when hockey's over, it's not easy making the transition. Yeah. You know, and you, you've got to be able to do something. So so thankful to have those opportunities. Hopefully these young men will get those same opportunities. Playing great hockey out here. A lot of fun to be a part of it and being a part of, you know, calling the games and, and seeing these young guys and hopefully you see their names somewhere in the future. And you do a great job, Martin. I oh, enjoy thanks. watching you and you're really a pro at this. Oh, I appreciate it. Dave, it's fun to have you up here. Dave Feemster, uh, Pueblo uh, community guy and and uh, just a great hockey guy as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Marty. Appreciate it.